students today we are discussing on the topic dissolution this is actually a different chapter in accountancy dissolution dissolution what do you mean by dissolution dissolution means stopping or stoppage or the discontinuation of something is called the dissolution or cease to exist there are two types of dissolution they are dissolution of form dissolution of form and dissolution of partnership dissolution of partnership and dissolution of form dissolution of partnership we have studied in many chapters in different chapters we have studied all those chapters were about dissolution of partnership we have studied the chapter change in profit sharing ratio among the partners that means accounting reconstitution of partnership change in profit sharing ratio admission of a partner we have studied retirement of a partner we have studied death of a partner also we have studied that means every time when there is change in profit sharing ratio among the partners or when there is admission of a partner or when there is retirement or death of a partner dissolution of partnership takes place dissolution of partnership takes place when there is change in profit sharing ratio when there is change in profit sharing ratio then when there is admission of a partner then there is retirement or death of a partner in all these three situations when profit sharing ratio changes when profit sharing ratio changes the agreement among the partners changes for example three partners X, Y, and Z. They are sharing profits in the ratio of three is to two is to one. They are sharing the profits in the ratio of three is to two is to one. Later on, they decide to change the profits equally. One is to one is to one. Okay. That agreement regarding the change, agreement regarding the sharing of profit is one of the element in partnership. Because partnership is the agreement among the partners. Okay, so in that one condition, is change uh, sharing the profit or loss. If that changes, it means that the agreement changes. So when there is change in profit sharing ratio, when there is change in profit sharing ratio, there will be change in partnership or partnership dissolution takes place. Okay, that all the agreement ceases to exist. All the agreement stops. Okay, then when there is an admission, when a new partner comes into the business, the agreement among the old partners we have to change. That means instead of in the place of the old agreement, we have to make a new agreement. That time also dissolution of partnership takes place. Then when there is retirement of a partner, one partner goes out. Then the agreement among the old partners ceases to exist, and in, in the place of that, we have to create a new agreement. Same there is the same will be applicable in the case of death also. Okay, in all these situation, the agreement changes or the agreement ceases to exist. Okay, so all these are the reasons for uh, reasons for partnership. This is now in this chapter we are studying about dissolution of firm. Dissolution of firm. What is this dissolution of firm? Here the firm ceases to exist. The firm ceases to exist. That means the firm stops or the firm discontinues. The partnership business discontinues. When there is change in partnership or when there is dissolution of partnership, the partnership is. Business will not discontinue. 
only the agreement discontinues. Here, in dissolution of firm, the partnership business is to exist. Thereafter, the business will not be there. Okay, that means they are going to wind up the business and liquidate the business. Is it clear? Now let us see what are the different methods of dissolution. Before that, what is the definition of dissolution of form? Dissolution of the form means the discontinuation of partnership form or discontinuation of the partnership business. Okay? So now the modes of dissolution. What are the different modes of modes of dissolution? That means there are various ways in which dissolution takes place. There are different methods of dissolution of form. We have to study about five different methods. Okay, the first one is by mutual agreement. By mutual agreement. That means section 40 of the Indian Partnership Act 1932 says about the dissolution of partnership business or dissolution of firm by mutual agreement. See, we know that partnership is by formed out of an agreement. Partnership is formed out of a mutual agreement among the partners. So, with the same mutual agreement, with another mutual agreement, we can discontinue the partnership form. We can dissolve the partnership form. Okay. So, with an agreement, business starts. So, with the same agreement, we can stop. Or with the, by forming an, another agreement, we can discontinue the business. That means the partners can decide to discontinue the business with a mutual agreement or mutual understanding among the partners. That is discussing in section 40. Okay. Now, second one we can say that compulsory dissolution. That says in section 41 of the Indian Partnership. Section 41 of the Indian Partnership Act says that a firm will be compulsorily dissolved when there is, when all or all partners except one becomes insolvent. That is one of the conditions. When all or all except one becomes insolvent. That means when all partners or all partners except one becomes insolvent. Insolvent means the situation where the liabilities or the assets are not equal to meet the liabilities of the person. That is called the insolvency. Insolvency is the situation where the total assets of that person is not sufficient to meet all his liabilities. That means when there is insolvency, the person will not be in a position to meet any of his claims. Okay. So in that situation, firm will be dissolved. That means if all the partners of the firm are unable to meet their liabilities, from their personal property or from the entire asset, the court will decide that that partner is an insolvent. Okay, that a, a person will be insolvent when the court declares that he is unable to pay his liabilities. So in that situation, with the supervision of the court, the as all the assets of that person will be realized to pay the liabilities. After that, nothing will be left with. So, an agreement among the agreement with an insolvent is unlawful. An agreement with an insolvent is unlawful. So, an agreement cannot be formed with a partner who is insolvent. Okay, an agreement cannot be formed with a person who is insolvent. Is it clear? So, 
is compulsory that that form should be dissolved. When when all partners or all except one becomes insolvent. If all except two becomes insolvent, the two partners, the remaining two partners can continue the business because minimum two people are needed for uh, starting and continuing the partnership business. So if all except one means only one person is there, with that person he cannot form a partnership business. Okay, at least the minimum two are needed. So in that case, business will be compulsorily dissolved. And in another case, when the business of the firm becomes unlawful, when the business becomes unlawful, when the court finds that the business, the day-to-day -day activities of the business or the firm is unlawful or illegal. If a firm is doing an illegal business or unlawful business, court will declare for the compulsory dissolution of the firm. So these are the two situations where compulsory dissolution takes place. That explains in section 41 of the Indian Partnership Act 1932. Okay, then let us see the third one. On happening of an event, on happening of This is as per section 42 of the Indian Partnership Act. Section 42 of the Indian Partnership Act means on dissolution on the happening of an event. On the happening of an event. On the happening of an event means uh, when some event takes place. So we can say that first uh, on the insolvency of a partner. Insolvency of a partner. When a person or partner becomes insolvent, the firm will be stopped. Then, on the fulfillment of an objective for which a firm is formed. On the fulfillment of the objective for which a firm is formed. See, we know that about particular partnership. It will be formed for uh, completing a particular venture or a particular activity. So after completing that activity, the firm will automatically close or stop. For example, a firm is established or formed for the construction of a bridge in a particular current. So on completion of the construction, the firm will be dissolved. So we can say that on fulfillment of the object for which the firm is formed. On fulfillment of the objects for which form is formed, on com uh, completion of that particular venture, then or on the expiry of the period for which the form was formed, on expiry of the period. That means sometimes firms or partnership will be formed for a certain period, say, say 10 years or 5 years or 20 years later. Like On expiry of that period, the firm will be automatically or that form has to be dissolved. Okay? Then another case, fourth case we can say by giving notice or dissolution by notice. That is given under under section 41 of the Indian Partnership Act. Section 43 of the Indian Partnership Act. Okay. This is applicable in the case of partnership at will. We have studied different types of different forms of partnership. So if a partnership is formed as a partnership at will, under this that this firm can be dissolved by giving a notice. That means, partnership particular means 
uh, the partnership is formed with the will of the person, with the desire or interest of the person. Then in the form formation time itself, it will be told that this firm will be there up to the time when the partner uh, decides to discontinue. So in such a type of partnership, if a firm, if a person, that means if a partner decides to discontinue the business, he can give a notice to the to other partners. At least 14 days in advance, he has to give notice to other partners of his intention to discontinue the business. That is called the dissolution of partnership by or dissolution of firm by notice. Okay? This is applicable for the partnership at the will. Okay. Then next one, the last one, by the order of the court. Dissolution by order of the court. This is discussed under section 44 of the Indian Partnership Act. Under section 44 of the Indian Partnership Act, dissolution of uh, partnership firm by the order of the court takes place. That means here, in this type of dissolution, a case comes before the court. And uh, while you know, during the proceedings of the uh, case, the court uh, feels it is fit to discontinue the business, then court gives an order. That is what is called the dissolution by order of the court. Okay, due to the judgment of the court, court a firm may be dissolved. So, which are the situations where the court declares that firm is dissolved? Or court declares for the dissolution of the firm? The most important or the first situation is that when a partner has become becomes of unsound mind. When a farmer becomes unsound mind. When a farmer becomes unsound mind, that means when the farmer uh, is not in a situation or not with the sound mind, that means a person becomes lunatic or mad or something happens or lack of stability in his mind. In that time, he will not be able to perform his duty as a father. So in such a situation, court will declare for the dissolution of partnership business. The next step, when a partner, uh, other than the partner, files a complaint, he is permanently incapable to perform his duty as a father. When a partner is permanently incapable to perform his duty as a partner. <coughs> when a partner permanently incapable to perform his duties as a partner. That means, when a partner, other than the partner who is filing a case, he is permanently incapable to perform his duties. He is permanently incapable to perform his duties. That means, as a partner, he cannot do anything in the business. So, in that case, uh, if a partner files a complaint or case before the court, court will declare for the dissolution. Then, When a partner or when the partners other than the partner who is filing the complaint is permanently commits breach of agreement. When partners commits breach of agreement. That means when a partner when all the partners or the all partners except the person who is filing the complaint or case is permanently doing or continuously making breach of agreement. The provisions of the agreement 
if the permits are violated, in that case the court may order for the dissolution of the business. Then, when permits uh, that permanently doing misconduct, when permits If the partners are not doing the activities as per the agreement or doing misconduct in the business or the agreement, it is called the uh, when partners continuously doing misconduct at that time also court may order for dissolution of the business. Okay. Then next, <coughs> so in this case, mis breach of the agreement says that. Any of the condition of the agreement is violated. If misconduct says that the partners are uh, doing misconduct, means doing activities which are against the uh, against the partnership business. Then next uh, we can say that when the court files, when the court files the firm cannot run the business at a loss. When the court feels the business cannot be run except except at the loss. When the court feels that uh, when the court feels that the business cannot be run except under loss. Except under the laws, under any laws, the business is not possible. In that case also, the court may order for the dissolution of partnership business. Okay. So these are the different modes of dissolution or different types of dissolution. There are five cases. Ah. So here the, this is most important. That means the order of the court is as per the order of the court if the firm dissolves someone has to file a case before the court then the court will declare for the dissolution of the business ok is it clear to everyone yes the settlement of accounts on dissolution settlement of Settlement of accounts on dissolution. That means here we are explaining the methods or the priorities where we have to settle our claims. Okay, at the time of dissolution, how to uh, declare or how to adjust on the claims. Okay, so that means we have to sell the assets and uh, from the sale proceeds. Uh, liabilities are to be settled one by one. So, which are the ways in which the liabilities can be settled? You can say, first of all, uh, the loss including the deficiency of the capital should be paid out of profit. The loss should be first paid out of the profit we have. If we have a profit, from that profit we have to pay uh, on the liabilities, we have to try to settle the liabilities. Okay, then next day out of the capital, first we have to pay out of profit, then should be out of capital, and lastly, if there is anything, and when we realize it from the partners from their profit sharing ratio. Okay, that means first out of the loss. Uh, including the deficiency of the capital shall be paid out of profit. That means loss should be paid first out of profit. Okay. Then uh, from after it's completing the profit, we have to use the capital. Okay. And uh, that uh, if there is left anything, should be shared among the partners. Suppose. 
That means if there is profit, first thing you have to settle the loss and uh, uh, other claims, and after that, if the anything will uh, remain, that should be shared among the partners in the profit sharing ratio. Okay, then the amount realized from the sale of assets will be utilized as follows. So the first point, the profit should be utilized to pay off the loss loss cost and the remaining can be shared among partners in their profit sharing ratio. Okay, then next, so second, the amount realized from the sale of assets that should be utilized as follows. First of all, with this, we have to pay all outside pay all outside liabilities first we have to pay all the outside liabilities next so from the amount realized from our asset we have to pay all the outside liabilities first then after that, whatever is remaining, from that amount, we have to pay the loans of advanced by the partner. So, next step, we have to pay off the loans advanced by the partner. That means, from the value of assets realized, first we have to pay off the liabilities. Liabilities should be paid first. And after that, pay off the loan. After completing the liabilities, then from the remaining amount, we have to pay off the bar, uh, pay off the capital, sorry, pay off the loan, which is taken from bar. Okay? Then, after that, Third case, after sending all these things, if something is left, that balance can be transferred to partner's capital. Okay, that means with that part, that balance, the capital balance of the partners can be settled. Settle the capital balance. With that uh, remaining amount, we will settle the partner's capital. And after that, if there is anything, if anything is there, so with that, what to do? It will be shared among partners in their profit sharing ratio. The balance, if any, will be shared among Partners in their profit sharing ratio. Okay, that means the amount, this is the amount realized from the assets. That means at the time of dissolution, we will sell assets one by one. So, from the amount realized from each of these assets, first the priority will be given to the uh, settling the liabilities which we have to pay to outsiders means other than the partners to whom we have to pay as an outsider to the business so such a liability should be settled first then after that if any amount is remaining with that amount we have to settle the loan taken from the partners and after that also if there is any amount left that can be used for uh, giving away the capital of the partners. 
capital of economics is being settled, capital balance will be. And after that, also, if any amount is left, that amount will be shared among the partners in their profit sharing ratio. Okay? Then, this is see, the accounting adjustments on dissolution. On dissolution, normally we have to prepare three accounts. Okay, first one is realization account. Realization account. Then partners capital account. And then cash or bank account. These are the accounts we prepare normally. Okay, normally these are the three accounts we have to prepare at the time of dissolution of partnership. And if there is, if any partner has given loan to the business, in that case the partner's loaners, loan account also to be made. Here there is no need of preparing balance sheet because hereafter there is no partnership firm. Partnership firm is going to stop here. So no need of preparing balance sheet. So these are the three accounts we have to prepare. And now let us see how to prepare revaluation, realization account. This partners capital account and cash accounts. Nothing is there much to discuss here. So let us start with the realization what is this realization account? This is a nominal account. Realization account is a nominal account prepared to bring all the assets in its book value, all the assets which can be realized in cash. It will be brought here in its book value, in their book value. And after that, all the liabilities to be settled also will be transferred here. Then these assets will be realized and liabilities will be settled. And can find out the balance of profit or loss on realization of assets. That means this is an account prepared for realizing the assets and paying of the liabilities. And in this account, we will transfer all the assets which can be sold or which can be convertible to cash and all the liabilities to be paid off or all the outside liabilities will be transferred in this account. Let us see how to prepare the revaluation, realization account. First of all, we have to transfer all the assets which can be convertible to cash on the debit side of the realization That means we will have a balance sheet, from that balance sheet we have to transfer all the assets. So we will write all the assets that will be taken in its book value. One by one we will write here. Then after that, all the assets will be transferred here. All the liabilities will be transferred here. That means will be credited to this account. That also in its book value. All the liabilities will be transferred. Okay? Then, at the time of realizing the assets, we have to realize, we will write here by cash or bank cash or bank so all the assets are transferred here from this asset they will sell all the assets one by one we will sell it so whatever money we get that will be mentioned here as cash or bank so we can write cash or bank and in the column we can write the name of each asset for example 
sunscreen that is that is how much is realized stock how much is realized furniture how much is realized like that we can write in inner column and we can write the total total amount outside as cash or tax okay then if any of the assets is not realized and invested it is taken over by any of the partner then we will write here as by partners capital that means assets taken over by a partner if an asset is taken over by a partner it will be credit it will be credited here as credited the realization account as partner's capital that means that amount will be deducted from his capital okay then here this liability is to be settled from the value realized from assets so that i mean write here to cash or bank cash or bank for settling the liabilities so how to write a uh, cash or bank also we write here the name of each liability for example bills payable then credit is then bank loan etc to write and the total amount will be taken outside as cash or bank for paying debt then sometimes a partner may agree to pay pay a liability he will say that i will pay the liability so in that case he will write that partner's capital to partner's capital when partner settles a liability suppose A is a partner, and we have taken loan from Mrs. A. And if A says that I will settle the loan, so that amount uh, he will settle, so that money will be credited to his capital. Okay. Then that is the case. Then another one, realization work. That means at the time of dissolution, selling of assets, realizing the assets, or selling of the assets and paying of. Liability is a process, so that will be done by a person. Okay, if the firm directly sells all the assets and pay off the liabilities, that means all the realization work is done by the firm itself. For that, some expense will be there. So that also we can show here as an expense. We will write here cash or bank. That is more realization. expense then you have to pay off the expense connected to real estate for example for advertising in newspaper or something related to selling of assets or transportation or all the expenses can be mentioned if any of such expenses is met by a partner suppose a partner is appointed to do realization work and the firm decides to pay some compensation for him then we will write instead of cash or bank we will write that partner's capital partner's capital that means realization expense paid to firm firm pays the expense to partner because he is appointed to do the realization work okay then these are the normal adjustments in the realization account in realization account uh, these are the adjustments first we will transfer all the assets to realization account in that case what can be the general entry realization debtor to assets one by one debtors stock furniture like that then after that we will transfer all the liabilities to the credit side so general entry is liabilities debtor to realization Then, at the time of selling the assets, cash account debtor to realization. 
at the time of paying of the liabilities, realization account at the to cash. If an asset is taken over by a partner, we will write partner's capital at the to realization. If a liability is secured by a partner, we will write realization account at the to partner's capital. If there is realization expense and directly paid by the firm, we will write realization account at the to cash account. If a partner is appointed to do the realization work and a compensation is given to him, we will write realization account at the to the partner's capital. Okay. Then now one more thing we have written here debtors. Was debtors was there as an asset and that is transferred here. Suppose normally in the partner in the balance sheet, sometimes debtors will be written inner column. As the gross amount will be written in the column and the less provision for doubtful debts will be written. In that case, which amount will be transferred here as asset? So here the debtor should be transferred in its gross amount, means the value given in the inner column before deducting the doubtful debts. That amount should be transferred here. And the provision for doubtful debts can be shown transferred here as a liability. The debts in gross value will be transferred as an asset, and the provision for doubtful debts will be transferred to the credit side as a liability. Understood? That is to be bear in mind. Okay. So these are the adjustments in connection with the realization. So we can close the realization accounts. And if there is profit, we will get the balance here, and that will be transferred to partners capital account. Partners capital accounts in old ratio. What is if profit? If profit. If there is loss, it will be balance. It will get. In the credit side, that we will write as partners capital accounts. That means if loss. Okay, that will be transferred in the old ratio. Now, partners capital account is to be prepared, and in that all the balances will be transferred. And as we have studied regarding. Uh, retirement, admission, and all. We have to transfer all the accumulated profit, reserves, etc. If there is, we will transfer that in the credit side. And uh, in the balance sheet, if there is loss, that means in the asset side it is given that profit and loss account. That means loss can be transferred that here. It cannot be transferred into the realization account because the assets which can be converted into cash only can be transferred here. And the cash, as an asset, cash also will not be transferred here. Why? Because that is need not that need not be converted into cash. It is already cash. So that is not to be transferred here. So which are the assets will not be transferred in the realization account? Cash will not be transferred. Then fictitious assets, any fictitious assets is there that will not be transferred. Then any deferred revenue expenditure is there that also will not be transferred. Only the assets which can be converted into cash will be transferred into the debit side. Then in cash capital account, all the partners capital will be transferred, reserve will be transferred, accumulated profit or loss will be transferred, and then uh, workman's compensation reserve, workman's compensation reserve. See, suppose we have workman's compensation reserve, we have about fifty thousand. If there is no claim, the entire amount will be transferred to capital. There is no claim for workman's compensation. In adjustment, there is no claim mentioned. In that case, the entire amount will be transferred to partners' capital. And if the claim is mentioned as, if the claim is, if the claim is rupees thirty thousand, what to do? Then we will write workman's compensation, compensation reserve after fifty thousand. Then to realisation 
How much is the claim? That will be transferred to realization amount. So, 30,000 will be transferred to realization. Then, remaining will be transferred to farmer's capital. How much? 20,000 will be transferred. Then, if the claim is 50,000, what to do? The entire amount of uh, claim or the entire amount of reserve will be transferred to realization account. It need not be transferred to capital. Okay? And if there if the claim is suppose 70,000, what to do? If the claim is 70,000 also, we have reserve only 50,000. That is to be transferred to realization account. Nothing will be left to transfer to capital. Okay? So, that is regarding treatment of special reserve in capital. And if there is an investment fluctuation reserve, that may not be transferred to capital account, it can be transferred directly to the realization account because we are realizing the investment. Okay? Then, in cash account, this is the account prepared at the last of solving accounts from dissolution. That means instead of balance sheet here, the cash account will be tallied equal in both sides. All the cash entries will be transferred to the realization to the cash account or bank account along with the opening balance, which will be there in the balance sheet asset side. We have told you in the asset side if cash it will not be transferred to realization account. It will be transferred to cash account. So opening balance will be transferred and all the Cash entries will be transferred to cash account. Finally, the cash account will be equal in both sides. Okay. So these are all the adjustments, accounting adjustments related to dissolution of partnership firm. Next class we will solve numerical problems from this chapter. I hope all of you understood this. If there is any doubt, you can intimate that to me. Okay.